Minister, Philip Wallen. He was formerly Vice President of Citibank, specialising in corporate finance, mergers and acquisitions, and at the age of 34 was rated by Australian Business Magazine in their top 40 Australian headhunted executives. But at the age of 40, he witnessed cruelty on such a colossal scale that it affected him profoundly. He decided to give away everything he owned with warm hands and to die broke, and he says so far he's right on budget. <laughs> Today he devotes his life to children, animals, the environment, the terminally ill, the homeless and the arts. He supports over 500 humanitarian projects in over 40 countries with schools, orphanages, shelters, sanctuaries, clinics and scholarships. And he's received the Order of Australia and in 2007 was Australian of the Year in Victoria. Have any of you bought a, a wool suit or wear leather shoes now in the last sort of six or, you know, six months? I'd like to answer that for me. Yep. Many years ago, when I, I was a, I'm a merchant banker, I jetted around the world like some big shot, and my favourite food was filet mignon and lobster, a fact for which I'm so profoundly ashamed. Today, I don't consume any animal plot products. The shoes that I wear, my belt, even my watch band have no animal products in it, and I can now look in the mirror in the morning with a clear conscience. <laughs> Sam, I'll answer your question as long as it doesn't come into my, my response time. Okay. It'll, it'll only take me a couple of seconds. Yeah. I completely disagree with factory farming. Most of the animals, the meat that we consume today, comes out of factory farms. Plain and simple. Anyone who tells you otherwise is disingenuous, to say the very least. And uh, I'm just surprised at the. At but, if, but if there was no factory farming in the world, yes, none at all. Yes, would it change your attitude to the eating of meat? It would not change my attitude in the slightest. Right. Okay. That's what I wanted to. Yes. Have that. Okay. To your statement. I'd like everyone here to just imagine another world. A clean, peaceful environment, healthy people, no cruelty, no killing, no screams. What type of person, some bright spark would come up and say, let's capture, cage, impregnate, torture and kill all the animals. Let's eat their rotting corpses and make our bodies a graveyard for murder victims. Would any, what, what would you say to someone who came up with that brilliant idea? Well, if no one here would invent such an industry, what kind of person would defend it? I guess I know the answer. Upton Sinclair said, it's difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it. Now, during this debate, while we've been having this debate, 30 million animals have been murdered. So, as I say, I was a meat eater until I saw the, the atrocities committed against these powerless animals. Cruelty, if inflicted on a puppy or a kitten, would have landed the, inf the offender in prison for a long time. But if it's on a factory farm, it's okay. See, I've, as I traveled around the world many years ago, I realized there were hundreds of animals I didn't eat. Dogs or cats, bears or bats, horses or hamsters, rosellas or rats, I ate none of them. So I simply added five animals to the list. Cows, sheep, chickens, pigs, and fish. I've never felt better. So I would say feeding a child meat is tantamount to tossing him a pack of Marlboros. The last sentence of Scott Fitzgerald's book reads, so we beat on boats against the tide, drawn back ceaselessly into the past. I ask you, are we to live forever in a sick, smug and cruel past? The brutes and the bullies have been Goliath, but David is coming. Maybe he's in this room, maybe he's one of you. And if not you, who? And if not now, when? Well, here are the figures um, when you were uh, surveyed coming in. The results were that there were 65% of people for the motion, 22.5% against, and 12.5% of you were undecided. 
At the end of the debate, the undecided has reduced to 6.9 per cent. The against side has declined to 19.3 per cent, which means it's been won with a whopping margin of 73.6 per cent by the affirmative. Finally, thank you to all of you for coming along tonight for your support, and I now declare the debate to be closed.